welcome back to Yorkshire Railway and welcome back to another model railway review. Today I have a box that I purchased from Hattons and today's model railway review is going to be a little bit different because it is not a locomotive that I have in here, it is some rolling stock. So without further ado I'll open the box and we'll see what I have purchased. So we'll get into the box and let's take a look. So great packaging as always from Hattons, they always package it with really nice thick bubble wrap, there's a sneak peek. So it is from Dapol and it is this, which is a Freightliner Heavy Haul HIA Limestone Wagon. So really, uh, really looking forward to this. Um, I haven't actually got any of the green ones, so very much looking forward to taking a closer look at this model. But first of all, let's have a look at the product code. So as you can see, again, this is the HIA Freightliner Green Heavy Haul Limestone Hopper. And the product code is 4F026, and then depending on which running number, 0265879. and 9. So let's take a look at the uh, model in closer detail, and I'll just open the box as carefully as I possibly can, and we'll take it out of the packaging. Um, so one thing to note, it is in like a uh, plastic sort of block of ice uh, packaging, so it shows there's quite a lot of the detail but also Dapol like to keep their models as safe as possible and there was a little bit of a detail bag uh, that's just fallen out there as well so that's just got some brake piping and lamps um, which is nice to see. Um, I might fit these one day but uh, whilst I'm running the temporary layout um, I tend not to fit any of the separately fitted parts at the moment. So remove the seal and it's got a lovely nice little sort of uh, polythene film just around it and we'll pull the wagon out. And first thing to note is it's got some weight to it. Um, it's not a huge wagon, but at the same time it is pretty uh, of a hefty size compared to some of my other rolling stock. But yeah, it has definitely got uh, some weight. And uh, there we go, the lovely printed Freightliner logo in the middle, as well as some other uh, separately fitted, uh, separately fitted, sorry, it's uh, printed detailing uh, so we have the HIA and then the running number on there um, we've got some like electrical uh, looking logos on the bottom there um, there's the switches on the left hand side um, separately painted as well um, separately painted um, pipework uh, around the side as well that black yeah this is absolutely lovely the Freightliner logo looks great uh, we've got some wheels over here and some other uh, levers that have been um, they're molded on the levers the wheel looks separately fitted but again painted out so that's quite nice as well um, and yeah the, the wheels are nice and aluminium as well we've got this look separately painted sort of aluminium sort of sheet um, down the side of the wagon that uh, stands out really nicely against the green no paint bleed there either um, unfortunately no sprung buffers but they are um, big hefty buffers on there and yeah, I just can't. I can't get over the weight of this model. Um, I imagine the uh, sort of black bit, as you see on the on the bottom, is just solid um, metal, just to give it that weight. Um, good turn on the axles, so I imagine it's not going to struggle going round um, corners or points or anything like that. Um, curves, should I say? Not corners. Curves. Um, yeah, I imagine it's going to be able to follow um, a loco quite well. But here is is down on the track, um, and again, it, I think it looks even better um, on the track. Uh, you can sort of get a scale of it compared to some of the other uh, rolling stock and locos in the background. But yeah, I, I think it's just an absolutely fantastic wagon. Um, now I know Dapol does get a bit of stick online um, for its rolling stock's couplings or bits uh, falling off and etc etc but uh, I I have got one of these previously and I will show it as well um, in this video but uh, yeah I've, I've had no such issues with these HIA wagons I think they're absolutely amazing uh, pieces of rolling stock uh, really good weight so they can uh, follow locos pretty well like you know they don't create too much drag but they also uh, are quite freewheeling um, and that, yeah, they just don't derail, you know, um, some of the heavier locos that I have, um, which I'll explain later on, sometimes can um, 
pull some of my lighter rolling stock off of the tracks uh, on occasion. Doesn't happen all the time, but every now and again you do get a little bit of a derailment. But uh, but yeah, we'll give it to just a freewheel test just to uh, basically show you how, um, even though how heavy this loco is, how freewheeling it is. And there you go. With absolute ease, that has made it almost round the track. I'll show you. So um, I've taken it from there, and that is where it is rolled to. So not a great distance, but at the same time, that's still pretty freewheeling to say I just lifted it over my fingers. Um, so I, I think that's pretty decent. Um, but I'll just roll it back now just so we can get the model back in frame. Oh, a little bit too far. But uh, yeah, there we go. As you can see, pretty th freewheeling as that, as that is. So uh, I don't think any locos will have much issue pulling this unless they're very low powered. But certainly some of the more hefty diesels and uh, steam locomotives can certainly pull these with absolute ease. But anyway, let's uh, have a look at some of the others that we have to offer. So just as I was unboxing the other models, uh, one of them did lose a buffer. Now, I did notice that when the DPD driver dropped this off, um, he was absolutely chucking all the parcels around, standing on them. So whether this is down to Dapple's packaging not standing up to that kind of brute force, or 100% it is down to DPD just with no regard for people's money and what they've purchased. But again, it does prove that the packaging obviously doesn't hold up to any brute force, and therefore, it, you know, in the, in the modern age that we are with deliveries and them not caring, I've got to mark that down in terms of uh, Dapple's reliability. Um, certainly one out of five is not too bad, but it is what it is. And here are the two different types that you can get. So the white one is the one that I previously, well, I got this for Christmas uh, last year. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's a nice contrast between the two. And I'm not really sure which ones I prefer, you know. I definitely say the... Uh, separately fitted parts and the separately painted parts stand out a lot more on the green version. However, the white definitely uh, looks a lot cleaner. Um, as such, like the the Freightliner logo to me stands out a lot more on that, and the uh, black piping on the side stands out a lot more. But I guess it's just down to personal taste. Me, I, I do like both equally, um, and I'm very torn between the two. So. Um, it is just down to whichever kind of like loco style um, you want to run. Um, you could have a full rake of white, you could have a full rake of green, or you can have a mix. It's entirely up to you. So here we have my Hatton's original Class 66 in the Freightliner livery, and I'm going to send this round on a test at uh, varying different speeds, just to see how the Dapple HIA wagons cope, basically whether we'll see any derailments or um, uncouplings, um, that's basically going to be the real test. So as you can already tell, I mean, the, the rake uh, looks absolutely fantastic with all the green and the white on the end. I quite like mixing the two together, but I know some people will say, oh, I'd only have one colour or the other. But, uh, but yeah, they do look absolutely stunning on the track. And running very, very smoothly as well so far. Um, again, uh, just doing them at varying different speeds, slow speeds, fast speeds, uh, coming across the point work to my um, fiddle yard where I have all my locos stored so they're ready on the track. But, uh, but yeah, we've got no problems as such going across these points. No derailments. Uh, that's just a little bit slowing down on my part. I accidentally knocked the controller. Um, but uh, yeah. No derailments or uncouplings so far, so looking great. Um, yeah, I, I do think these wagons are absolutely great, especially for the uh, Hattons. So I said I'd talk about this a, a bit earlier on. Um, the Hattons Class 66, um, from my experience anyway, has a bit of an issue on my layout in that some of the lighter um, rolling stock it does sometimes pull them off the track, and I can only really run it on the outer loop. Um, even though it is radius three turns, but it just it has that little bit extra in terms of the straight that it's not constantly on the axles. Um, 
but yeah, some of the lighter rolling stock, it just tends to like pull it off of the track. And I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, but this is just through my experience. So I kind of do need something heavy um, just for it to be able to haul. And the Dapple Wagons are 100% standing up to that. Obviously, they have the uh, rotating um, axles on there as well. So that does help them go around corners a little bit more smoothly. But at the same time, I think that weight does help them stay on the track and certainly doesn't allow the Hatton's enormous heftiness of uh, the weight of that logo to basically pull them off the track. And at varying speeds through here, it's doing absolutely marvellous. Um, again, no derailments, uh, no uncouplings. They're, they're running absolutely splendidly. And uh, to be honest, that's everything I really wanted because um, I only bought these really to run with my Class 66. They're, they're not really going to be run with any other locos unless I get anything else Freightliner livery down the line. But uh, at the moment, they were just purchased to run uh, with the Class 66. But now we're going to test the one thing that I haven't done yet, which is point work. So I'm just going to reverse them into my fiddle yard um, and see how they cope. So this is going to go across a double set of Hornby points and we're just going to see how they cope. I'm uh, going to give them a test of uh, forward and backwards um, just to see how they do. But so far, so good. Yep, that's looking all good, um, which I'm very, very relieved about because I did think uh, the Hattons was just going to push them off. <laughs> it, it tends to be the thing. I, I, it's something to do with the weight of this loco. Uh, going over points or anything, it does just tend to pull things and there we go. Oh god, it's it's derailed one already. Um so yeah, so going backwards, absolutely fine. Um maybe I did go a bit too fast on the way uh back onto the track, but uh, we'll test it again, reverse. Yep, gone back on. Fine. Um no problems there. So whether it is coming back onto the track and yep same thing's happened again, front one has derailed. So I'm, I'm going to say it's down to the Hatton's class 66 this. <laughs> it's a constant uh, bane in my side um, with this uh, locomotive is that it just, just is so heavy and for some reason the coupling, I don't know what it is, but the NEM coupling on it does doesn't swing all too great uh, and because of the way to loco it tends to just pull things off of the track so I'm going to have an attempt with some other locos so here is a Hornby Bill um, might be a little bit too light there was a bit of wheel slip on there for the whole rake of wagons but uh, yeah the loco is struggling and we've stalled on the track um, let me try something a bit more reliable because that Hornby Bill is absolutely uh, ancient to this point. Um, it's a good 20 years old. Um, and here I've got a, a British Rail 040. Um, again, stalled on the track, but again, absolutely fine. Uh, getting the wagons uh, back onto the track, uh, other than the stalling on the points, but I think that's down to the wheel base just being a little bit too small. Um, yeah, it's, it's probably a little bit too small to uh, push them back on as well. I don't think it can quite get the speed. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll swap it out for something a little bit larger um, than 040s and just see how that copes uh, getting it across the track. So I've swapped it out for the Hornby Large Prairie um, and we're just going to see how that copes getting it across the, uh, the track. Again, going in absolutely fine. Um, as we've seen with pretty much all the locos, going in on the points uh, seems to be fine. It's coming back where a lot of the issues seem to be. And for some reason, my Hornby Large Prairie has cut out on the point work. Uh, not really sure why, because it's usually pretty decent going across points. But uh, there we go. A little bit of shuddering. Oh, God, this is embarrassing. Um, bear with me, folks. There we go. Finally back onto the main line. But as you can see, 
pulling them on no problem so yeah um i think that's uh, a pretty good test we'll we'll give it another another go uh on and off oh we've actually decoupled um that's uh that's not a good mark for the dapple wagons but again good test against uh, different locos how they hold up with the coupling so certainly with hornby to dapple doesn't seem uh, as reliable as any of the others but it's reliable at pulling it back on the track and that is what matters so anyway folks let's move on to the ratings so it's time for everybody's favorite part which is the ratings so this is for the dapple freightliner heavy haul hia limestone hopper and we'll start off with the performance so i've given it a four star mainly down to the fact we did have a slight issue with the couplings uh, at one point the coupling did detach and we also had a little bit of derailment with certain locomotives. Now obviously this could be down to the locomotive as I did express earlier in the video. However, I think when you buy a piece of rolling stock, no matter the manufacture of your locomotive, I think that it should be able to perform without fault on any locomotive that it is hitched up to. And in this case, it just didn't. So that is why it's getting marked down to four star. Detail wise, I've also awarded it four star. And that is mainly down to, I love the fact that there is lots of separately fitted components to this rolling stock. Uh, it's got really great um, weight to it as well. Uh, it's lovely that it's got aluminium wheels. However, there was a few nickels uh, with these separately fitting parts falling off in uh, the packaging. And that's the main reason why it's getting uh, a demotion. Um, livery wise, this is where it is getting a little bit more of a bump up. I've awarded it five stars just because the livery is applied beautifully. Uh, the Freightliner livery is absolutely iconic and Dapple have done an amazing job at translating this into model form. There's no paint bleed or anything like that. The colors stand out bright and well. So yeah, that is why it's getting five stars. Quality wise, similar to the detail, um, you know, it's great to have all these separately fitted parts, but again, it's only as good as if it actually uh, stays on the uh, model itself and it just didn't uh, you know yes we could blame uh, DPD and any other postal services as much as we like but again uh, yes it is their job to get our packages here safely but it is also down to the manufacturer to make sure that their parcels are packaged suitably uh, to protect your goods inside and obviously, yes, the, the packaging in here is great, but it's obviously not up to standard as well. And it did allow one of my models to get damaged. And therefore, that is why uh, the detail and the quality have been knocked down just that little bit much. Value-wise, now I haven't actually said how much I paid for these. So I did purchase them from Hattons, and they were on sale at £25. But I believe the full RRP is around about £35. So I've got a £10 reduction, which is great. However, I think it still is a little bit steep for what you're actually getting in uh, your package, basically. So the model is great, but I do think £20 would be a, a more suitable mark for how much I would say these are worth. But definitely at the £25 mark, it's a step in the right direction from the full RRP. And that brings us to an overall rating of 4.3 stars out of 5, which I don't think is bad. It's absolutely a brilliant model. As I said before, it's great for weight. You know, the hoppers aren't actually filled with anything, so adding uh, real um, sort of rocks inside it would certainly add more weight. Although I do uh, know you can get sort of like resin inserts to pop in should you wish. But uh, yeah, it performs very well. It's very free re freewheeling um, and certainly definitely worth a buy if you're in the market for any Freightliner rolling stock. But that is all from me today guys if you've enjoyed this review don't forget to hit the thumbs up and show your appreciation as well as hitting that subscribe button certainly goes a long way building my following as well as allowing me to bring more model railway reviews to you so certainly hit that subscribe button if you haven't already as well as don't forget to leave me a comment if you've enjoyed the video or if you would like to know more information on the rolling stock itself or if you've got any suggestions for what you'd like to see next time. That's all from me today, guys. I hope you have a lovely day. Take care 
and I will catch you in the next review. Bye-bye.